Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2019 Advanced. We're going to continue looking at lookup functions and in particular we're going to look at the VLOOKUP function. The principle on which this VLOOKUP function works is pretty much the same as HLOOKUP except that instead of looking horizontally across a list of values it looks for a vertical list of values to look up. Now, one of the reasons I'm devoting an entire section to this function is that I'm also going to try and make the lookup function functionality here considerably more complex. And the way that we're going to use the VLOOKUP function is to do some more work on developing an invoicing system. At the moment in lookup functions three here, I have a few headings on a sheet. And apart from a date and those headings, there's not too much other information currently. But the general principle is that I'm going to put together a system whereby I can take an order from a client, list the details of the order and prepare an invoice. Now, basically, in the body of the order in this part here, I'm going to specify the number of an item that the client wants, a part number and a description associated with that part number. There will then be a unit price, a discount where applicable, a discounted price and a total price and then a grand total for the order down in cell H12. Now the first thing you might say is where is all this information coming from? Well on the second sheet in this workbook I have a catalogue. Now it's a relatively small catalogue but it will demonstrate what I'm trying to do very well. And it's a catalogue of parts, and these are actually plumbing, bathroom fitting parts. And each part has a part number in column A, a description in column B, and a dollar price undiscounted in column C. So basically what we need to do is when we put a part number into column C on the first sheet, the first thing we're going to do is look up the description. Now, if somebody puts a part number in there that doesn't correspond to an item in the catalogue, we'll want to put a relevant message in there and we will also need to deal with some other complications as we go along. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is give all of the parts catalogue a name. So I'm going to select the entire catalogue, click on formulas, and in the defined names group in the middle there, I'm going to select define name and the name I'm going to give this is parts catalog. The scope of the name is workbook so I can reference it on a different sheet so that's fine and I'll click OK. Now let me go back to sheet one and we'll implement our first V lookup. Now what I actually want to do is to get the description, to show the description for the part that's specified in column C. We currently don't have a part number in there, but we will do eventually. So I'm going to do that by using the VLOOKUP function. The arguments start with the lookup value, which will be C7. So when that part number is entered in C7, that's what we're going to use to look up the description. The table array will of course be the name of our parts catalog. So I need to select the range. So it's parts catalog. Now the column index number, which column are we trying to pull information back for? So we're trying to pull back information on the description, which is column two. And finally, the range lookup. Here, if you're looking for values in a range, say between two part numbers, you would set this to true, but that's not what we need in this case. We're looking for an exact match. So in this case, the range lookup value is false. And click OK. And of course we get an error message. Now that's because we don't have a part number in C7 as yet. So all we're getting is an NA message. Now I can overcome that using a similar approach to the one we used in the preceding section for cases where we get an error message because there is an if NA function. So what I'm going to do is embed that VLOOKUP in an if NA function.
The first argument is the value to a sign. So there we have our VLOOKUP as our first argument. And the second argument is where we want to put what we want to happen if the value is NA. So in this case, I'm just going to set it to be um, an empty string again. So I'm going to do just a space in double quotes, close parentheses, enter. So let's try that out now by selecting a number from the parts catalog. And I'm just going to grab this one in A3. I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into cell C7. And there we go. It pulls back the description. Now I want to do one more thing to this to make it a little more helpful and informative. So let's fill this formula down to D11. And let me say, put a part number in C9 that doesn't exist in the database. So I'm just going to go with 1, 2, 3, 4. Now notice that in this case, what has happened is different from the situation where the part number is just left blank. I actually show the text there, not found. And if you look at the version of the formula that I have in here, I still have the if NA and the VLOOKUP. And of course, if the VLOOKUP works and the part number is found, then the description is shown. But if it doesn't, in the second argument for the if NA, I've put an if statement. And in that if statement, I've said, if you trim the part number, in this case C9, and it's blank, then that means that the user hasn't entered a part number. So therefore, the fact that the lookup didn't work is fine because the user didn't specify a part number. So in D9, just put a blank. That's what the double double quote is. But if when trimming C9, there's something there, but I still don't find a description, so the VLOOKUP still essentially doesn't work, then I've got a situation where the part number is not found. And in that case, the message I'm going to put in cell D9 is not found. So that draws a distinction between the case where the user has entered a value in the relevant cell in column C and where they haven't. So that's quite a helpful change to make. So armed with VLOOKUP and a couple of the other things I've explained recently, I think we can do quite a bit more work on this invoice. And to be more specific, I think you can do quite a bit more work on this invoice. And you're going to do quite a bit more in exercise two, which is coming up next. So I'll see you then.